commonly referenced quantity in microeconomics is the learner index, which states a firm's markup over its marginal cost of production as a function of the degree of market power it has. Market power is generally measured by price elasticity of demand, with more elastic demand corresponding to less market power and more inelastic demand corresponding to more market power. This makes sense, since more elastic demand means that customers are more price sensitive and will change their behavior a lot in response to higher prices, whereas more inelastic demand means that customers are less price sensitive and won't change their behavior very much in response to higher prices. Not surprisingly, we're going to see that it's optimal for a firm to mark up its prices more when its customers aren't very price sensitive. To start seeing this relationship, we can examine what's going to happen to a firm's markup over marginal costs in a case where it's facing more elastic demand, and also in a case where it's facing less elastic or more inelastic demand. So let's look over here first. So when we say that the firm is facing more elastic demand, what that means is that its demand curve is flatter on average or more horizontal, as we've drawn here. And then we also know that the firm's marginal revenue curve is going to start at the same point on the vertical axis as the demand curve, but it's going to be twice as steep. So with elastic demand, we'd see a demand and a marginal revenue that looks something like this. And then we throw in the firm's marginal cost of production, and we know that it's profit maximizing for the firm to produce the quantity where its marginal revenue is equal to its marginal cost. So we can look at where those curves intersect, and we notice that they intersect right here. So we can see that the firm's optimal quantity of production is this quantity Q star. And then we can say, well, what price is this company going to charge? Well, it's going to charge the highest price it can, such that consumers will still buy all of its output. And we can see that by going up this point Q star up to the demand curve. And that's going to give us our profit maximizing price P star. And what we can see here in this case where we're facing more elastic demand is that the distance between the price charged and the marginal cost of production at that quantity is actually pretty small. On the other hand, let's think about what happens when the firm is instead facing less elastic or more inelastic demand. So more inelastic demand corresponds to a demand curve that is more vertical. So what we see here, for example, is we might be facing a demand curve that looks something like this. And again, our marginal revenue curve, if we were to extend this up, it would intersect at the same point as the demand curve on the vertical axis, we just can't see that. But again, the marginal revenue curve is twice as steep as the demand curve. And the profit maximization rule is exactly the same, that it's profit maximizing for this firm to produce the quantity where its marginal revenue is equal to its marginal cost of production. Now again, we can see that those two curves intersect here, giving us this optimal quantity Q star. And again, in order to set price, the firm's asking the question, well, how much can I charge such that consumers are still willing to pay for this quantity of output? Well, that's exactly what the demand curve gives. So we go up from this quantity on the demand curve to find our optimal price, P star. Now, here we said that our markup over marginal cost was pretty small that if we were to look at price minus marginal cost over here, we just had something that was you know, a few finger width apart. Now compare that to here, if we were to look at price minus marginal cost here, we have a price that's all the way up here and a marginal cost of production that's all the way down here. So here, if we were to look specifically at the difference between price and marginal cost, we would get a difference that's very big. So let's summarize what we've just deduced graphically. When we have more elastic demand or less market power, we're not able to mark up price that much over marginal cost. So when we see an elasticity of demand number that's big, we see a price minus marginal cost number that's small. We also see in this case here, when we're facing more inelastic demand, namely when 
our elasticity of demand is small in absolute value, though we see a large difference between price and marginal costs. This suggests that there's some sort of inverse relationship between markup over marginal costs and elasticity of demand. In fact, that inverse relationship between markup over marginal cost and elasticity of demand is exactly what the learner index shows. So more specifically, we can define the learner index as follows. The learner index states that a firm's price minus its marginal cost divided by its price. So note here, though we're not talking about the absolute difference between price and marginal cost, we're instead talking about that difference as a fraction of the overall price of the item. And we say that this relative markup over marginal cost is equal to the reciprocal of the price elasticity of demand. Notice here that our price minus marginal cost divided by price is always going to be a number greater than zero because a firm is never going to charge a price less than its marginal cost of production at the quantity that it's actually producing. So this formula makes sense to say it goes one over the price elasticity of demand if we've defined price elasticity of demand as a positive number. So if we're defining price elasticity of demand as the absolute value of the percent change in quantity demanded divided by the percent change in price, we can think about this formula here. If we're thinking about elasticity of demand as always a negative number, meaning we're not taking the absolute value, and we're just letting it be the case that quantity demanded and price move in opposite directions, then we would say that price minus marginal cost divided by price is equal to negative one divided by the price elasticity of demand, because then we would have a negative number divided by a negative number and we would get a positive number, which is what we said makes sense here. So we can think about why the learner index makes intuitive sense given what we know so far. And we can think about the two sides of this as they relate to the graphic explanations that we talked about before. So we notice here, when we had more elastic demand, we had an elasticity number that was big. So if we had an elasticity number that was big, and we plugged it into the denominator of a fraction, one over that number is going to be really small. And we're going to see a small markup over marginal cost, which is in fact what we saw here, or we would see rather if we normalize this for price. On the other hand, this is the scenario where we had a small number in absolute value for elasticity of demand. So if we looked at that on the side of the index, one over a small number would give us a big number. And so here we would see a big relative markup over marginal cost. So it makes sense that this formula is in line with what we deduced graphically or qualitatively. We can note one other interesting feature that arises as a result of the fact that we said earlier that it's never optimal for a company to produce at a point where the price elasticity of demand that they're facing is inelastic. We said at those points the firm's going to have an incentive to raise the price in lower quantity. So we could see then if it's only optimal to produce where we're facing elastic demand, then we could say that whenever we're going to be applying this formula, because notice when we're looking at the markup over marginal cost, we're looking at the price, the marginal cost, and the elasticity of demand at the profit maximizing price and quantity. That's an important thing to keep in mind. So we can say at the profit maximizing price and quantity, we know that in absolute value, our price elasticity of demand has to be at least one because we said it's only optimal to produce where demand is elastic. So if we know that our price elasticity of demand is at least one in magnitude, we can say that one over 
the magnitude of this elasticity of demand is less than or equal to one. And in that way, we can actually put some bounds on the value of the markup over marginal cost as a fraction of price. Because we can say, if this guy here is always less than or equal to one, then it's also true that what's on the left side of this equal sign has to be less than or equal to one. So then we get here that P minus MC over P is less than or equal to one. And we said before that the company was never going to charge a price that's less than its marginal cost of production at that quantity. So we can also conclude that this quantity here is going to be greater than or equal to zero. So we have some bounds on this relative markup over marginal cost to say that it's always going to be between zero and one inclusive. Last but not least, we can come back to the relationship between market power and markup over marginal cost. Because we said at the beginning of this video that more market power means that your consumers aren't particularly price sensitive. They're not going to run away if you raise prices a little bit. So we can say that more market power is going to be associated with an elasticity of demand that's smaller in magnitude. And then we can see, based on this relationship here, that if we have an elasticity of demand that's small in magnitude, we're going to end up with a markup over marginal cost that's large. So when we have more market power, we're going to see more of a markup. We're also going to see that when we have less market power, because we said that that was associated with an elasticity of demand that was large in magnitude, customers that are more price sensitive, that that is going to be associated with a smaller markup over marginal cost. So we're going to see these smaller markups when we have less market power, which is in line with what we probably found to be intuitive in the first place.